Hey everybody, gonna do a little tutorial on pull to refresh. Um, just wanted to kind of sort of show how you might add this to a view controller or to a table view controller. Uh, so we're just gonna run through it real quick. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just create a new application, single view application template, and I'm just gonna call it pull to refresh. Um, the language, make sure the language is set to Swift. We don't really need core data. Uh, iPhone is fine. We'll just leave the rest of by, uh, by their defaults. Okay, create the repository, all that good stuff. So uh, our app is probably not super interesting at this point. Uh, if you run it, you see a white screen. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's go open up the view controller and add a table view to get started because we're gonna need something to actually, uh, to actually have pull to refresh on. Uh, we don't need this stuff here for this tutorial. Just delete that. So the first thing I'm going to do uh, is create some data. So let's say data is my favorite animals. Uh, cats, dogs, and birds. Those aren't really my favorite fan of animals, but they work for now. Uh, separately, we're going to create an array of just table data. And that's an array of strings. Uh, so initially, we'll say the table data is actually just my list of favorite animals and that'll do for now. So from here, let's actually add the table view to the view. So um, let's create a table view controller, table view controller, and we'll just instantiate it with its, uh, its default constructor, table view controller. Um, I guess we could specify the style. Quick tip, if you wanna kinda see what UI table view styles are available, you can click on the autocomplete that Xcode gives you here, press enter, and that kinda types it in for you, and command click on it. So now what you see is you have plain or grouped. <clears throat> so you can type UI table view style dot plain, or, so a little shortcut in Swift, you're gonna say dot plain like that, and that'll work. So that creates a new UI table view controller. Uh, but it doesn't yet add it to the scene and it doesn't um, specify any of the callbacks that you need to actually display content. So first, um, we'll grab the table view out in view did load of the controller. Table view controller is table view. Uh, and then we'll say we're gonna set the data source to equal this class view controller. If you try to do that, it'll give you an error here saying, does not comply to the protocol, yada, yada, UI table view data source. That just means we need to say UI table view data source up here as well, because we have to adhere. If you command click, you can see. Oops, no, you can't see. Never mind. But anyway, UI table view data source is required in order to set the data source of this variable. Now we're getting a different error, which says, well, you're not conforming to it. You've added it as uh, you know one of its things that it, it's, uh, it's conforming to, but you don't actually have the functions. If you command click on that, you'll see that these two things are required. These are optional, so we're gonna grab these two functions, go back to our class, and just as a matter of habit, you wanna leave a comment, mark UI table view data source. This is the stuff that's coming strictly out of that data source. Uh, the purpose of mark is to add it to the jump bar, which is right here, UI table view data source. So I'm gonna paste that stuff in, Erase uh, all the garbage it adds in there. This first one wants to know the number of rows. Well, the number of rows is however many table data there are. What is the count? That's how many rows there are. Now the cell is a little more complicated. We're gonna have to say the cell is a, so you grab the table view and you DQ a reusable cell with the identifier, whatever identifier is, cell identifier. We haven't defined that yet. So we'll define it up here, and we'll just call it the pull to refresh cell identifier. It's good enough. <clears throat> Works for me, work for you. Return cell. So now we're creating the cell and we're returning it. The only thing we're not doing is setting a title. So let's do that. The text label text, which is pretty much the title, uh, is gonna be equal to whatever the table data is, and we're gonna get the array element of that table data because we know they're strings, so we can set the text of whatever index path row is. Because the section of index path is always gonna be zero because there's only one section in this table view. 
So we're only interested in the row. Um, uh, what am I getting an error here for? Any object, oh. So DQ reusable cell with an identifier, if you command click, returns any objects. Uh, but that's not really super useful to uh, Swift, so you really need to cast it as the thing that you know it's going to be, which in this case is just the default UI table view cell. Uh, and I guess since we're casting it, it knows us there. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So the, the cell is no longer an optional. It's uh, This is actually guaranteed to cast, it looks like. Okay, cool. So we're now creating cells. We have accounts. Uh, but one thing we need to do for this function to work is register the cell identifier against the class UI table view cell. And I'm just going to do that right before I set the data source. Register class cell class for reuse and ident identifier. Now the class is UI table view cell, and to order actually to actually use that, you have to say self. That's the equivalent of UI table views uh, class method in Objective C. If you're familiar with that, and the reuse, reuse identifier is the same one we used before, the cell identifier. So now if you run the app from here, um, oh, we actually forgot one step. We need to add the table view to our view. Yeah. Cool. So now we have this little table view. It says that we like cats, dogs, and birds. If you pull, there's nothing there, nothing scroll. This is pretty simple app. Doesn't really do much, right? But it's kind of a good starting point. So let's say we wanted to refresh the data and maybe we're gonna get it from a server or something like that. Uh, but for our purposes, we're just gonna load in a different list. So the new favorite animals are elephants and maybe giraffes. So those are pretty cool. Dinosaurs, everybody likes dinosaurs. But still cats and, and still dogs too, I like those. But not birds, never birds. Okay, so those are our new favorite animals. Um, what we want to do is have a pull to refresh. So when I pull down, it's going to refresh. It's going to load in this new list. So this is actually pretty easy to do. All you need to do is create a, uh, it's called a UI refresh control. So as another instance variable for a class, I'm going to create refresh control. And that's going to be uh, instantiated by the UI refresh control um, initializer, which you can just use the default. That'll create basically a, a little spinny activity indicator wheel, uh, and that'll work for most most purposes, actually. So the only thing left to do is tell the table view controller that the refresh control is the refresh control we just created. Uh, it, so if you run that real quick, we'll see that when we pull down, we get the little refresh indicator, but it doesn't do anything. It just kind of keeps going forever. And the reason why is because we have to actually add a target for this refresh control to fire when it gets pulled down. So we're going to take the refresh control and say add target. Now this is basically a complicated way of saying that you want to call a function on some instance, some object that's been instantiated. In our case, the instance object could just be this. So we'll put self, the selector, just a name for a function, You but you write it as a string. So we're going to say... Um, you know, did refresh list and the control events. Remember before I, pre I said just press enter and if you command click, you can see what the events are. This one's a little bit unclear because uh, it's not strictly saying anything about refresh events. We can see that these are for text fields. Uh, this is a touch event, text field, range, da, da da da. This is for, you know, obviously for UI. The only one that doesn't isn't really super clear about it's not the correct one is value changed. So the value of the refresh control changed, that's going to be the one to go with. It's a little weird. I kind of think maybe they should rename that or something, but it works. Okay. So now did refresh list is going to be called on the instance object self, which is just this. So let's add the function. Doesn't need to do anything fancy. Uh, in fact, for now, all we're going to do is say, um, get the refresh control, or actually, hmm, yeah, what am I doing here? Funk. Self so refresh control, <clears throat> and we're going to say, I think it's end refreshing. Yeah, there it is. Run that real quick. And now you'll see when we pull to refresh and let go, it just goes away immediately. It's like an instantaneous update. 
but we're not updating the list. We can do that pretty easily by just saying our table data is now equal to our new favorite animals. Grab the table view controller and tell it to reload its data and then we can end refreshing. So let's run that real quick. Pull to refresh and the list is reloaded with the new information. So that's pretty much it. Um, you can customize this a little bit deeper. You can actually dig into the refresh control, the UI refresh control class and see what you can do. For example, we could take this refresh control, set the background color. Maybe we'll set it to red. Uh, we could also add a string. This called an attributed title. Um, and this attributed string is kind of a way of having like sort of formatted text, but you could also just pass in a string here do something simple. Maybe we can say um, last updated on and then we'll just put whatever the current NS date is. If you run that, do a little pull to refresh. It was weird how it started up like that. Let me restart that. Huh. It's interesting that it shows by default. I don't know why it's doing that actually. But anyway, sort of the same purpose, works the same way. That's odd actually. I guess it just by default shows it. I didn't know that. But I must have done something wrong here. Anyway, um, I'll look into that. But this is sort of uh, the basic version of how to set up a refresh control. The only thing that was really unique about what we did in uh, compared to other tutorials I've done is I'm instantiating a UI table view controller rather than just a table view and sticking it on there because I need to set the refresh control on the controller. You need to sort of higher level uh, of abstracting from the table view in order to set the refresh control. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it. Um, so I hope that people kind of get something out of this. I hope it's useful. Um, if not, feel free to yell at me in the comments. Thanks.